Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and I got a bomb dropped on me tonight. My wife said that I need to make a giant snowflake for my son's winter festival that he's having in his school. And she said, why don't you just go out to the garage and cut it out of this giant piece of poster board that I got? But I informed her that I no longer own the giant X-Carve that can do that. I downsized the little carvey that fits better in my garage. But you know where the X-Carve ended up? At Darth Tigger's garage, which I'm standing in right now. So we're gonna do the project here. Well, here is the giant X-Carve from Inventables. Now I have a video on building this thing that you can watch and I'll have it linked down below in the video description, not under the bench, in the video description. But anyways, I had to come over here to this Canadian's house. You guys all recognize him as Darth Tigger. 501st. If you guys don't know what that is, it's like a Star Wars thing. These guys like really nerd out bad in their, ba their mother's basements and anyways. Anyways, we're over here in his garage because he has the X-Carve, which is driven by Easel, which is running on this computer right here. So we're gonna load up a snowflake graphic and cut it out of this giant piece of poster board. And if everything goes right, I might just get laid tonight. I want you, Jerry. Well, I didn't, I didn't mean by him, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. All right, so the main reason that I had to come over here was because the x car comes in two different sizes. Now, this is the V1 x car that I got. This one actually has an external box that has all the electronics. And I'm gonna say it's a bit janky. I think that's fair enough, right? Little janky? Little janky, but luckily Inventables fixed it all up. So in the new version, if you were to go buy this today, it is much, much better. But at the end of the day, it works good and it cuts 29 inches by 29 inches roughly square. So I think this is gonna be sufficient to cut out a giant snowflake that a little kid can stick his head through the center of. So I brought my Microsoft laptop, but why on earth would I use that when we already got this old ass Lenovo hooked up? Powered by VPro, baby, whatever the hell that is. So if you guys haven't seen the other videos on the X-Carve, this is Easel. It's basically an HTML5 based software that runs in roughly any browser and it allows you to go and do all of your graphic stuff that ultimately gets cut out on this machine. It's actually incredibly easy to use. I would say that this thing is every bit as easy to use as a 3D printer. Now the X-Carve works with just about any material. Today we're just using a foam core poster board here that's probably about a quarter of an inch thick, give or take. And then you can select whatever bit that you want on this little monster. We're just gonna use this tiny, tiny little bit, mainly because we're lazy and it was already on the machine. I think that's a fair statement, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, we're all lazy, right? God, just look at that magnificent wiring job, man. Thank goodness for V2 products. All right, we're using a caliper to measure the width of the material. Looks like it's about uh, 0.19. I guess I was in the ballpark. You guys probably don't want to know what else I've measured with this. Ladies. All right, so here we have the latest version of the Easel software. So we're going to go ahead and import my graphics. So we're just going to go up to File, Import SVG. That's the graphics format it uses. It'll also use a G-code file if you have one. Uh, if you want to make your own SVG, you can use Adobe Illustrator for one, uh, or you can use Adobe Photoshop. Both can export as SVG, but you have to just make sure you don't use multiple colors. Otherwise, it won't work. Now we, we went ahead and loaded all three of the graphics that are in this particular file here. Well, we only want the big one, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this one, select it. Remove this one, select it. And we are good, now we got the big guy. Now the material dimensions that we have here, we just put in 29 by 29, because that's the entire cut area of this particular machine. And we put in the material depth at 0 0.19 inches. So I'm actually gonna increase that slightly to two zero just to make sure that we get full penetration. Also notice the z-axis has roughly the same penetration I do. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna come over here, we're gonna grab our snowflake and we wanna make it as big as we can within this area without going over the material. And we'll be able to find the edge of the material when we start. So if I hold down the control key and use the middle mouse wheel, I can go ahead and just scroll out. You can also like scroll around and move around the platform. It's actually a really decent software. Uh, but because it's HTML5 and runs within the browser, don't expect it to run at like a phenomenal frame rate or anything. But let's be honest, most of these shop guys are mostly blind anyways. They, they don't notice. Come on, drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, and bam. There we go, that's gonna use up everything. You can see there's a preview over here also that shows us what's going on. Well, now one thing is we don't want it to just cut out a little bit and make it like a design. We want it to cut all the way through. So we're gonna change it from fill to outline. And then we're gonna do the plunge depth all the way down past 3 16 of an inch. Wow, this laptop's fast, Rob. All right, so now we need a place for the kids to stick their heads through. So we're just gonna go up here and grab a circle. It's just gonna create a basic circle shape. Now we wanna make it a certain size. So we're gonna come over here and say about nine inches to give the room, room for the kids to stick their face through. And then we wanna put it right in the center. Well, if I wanna try to do it myself, I can, but it'd be much easier if I just go up to edit until to center the material. Now it's right in the center. But again, we have the same problem again. It's not cutting all the way through. We want it to cut all the way through. So we're gonna go back to cut and we're gonna tell it to go all the way down to the full depth 
and do an outline. And now it's gonna cut all the way through and that little piece is gonna fall out in the center. Now the reason we didn't do a fill is because then it'll just go back and forth for hours and hours and hours and hours to eat away the material. Now this is just gonna cut a nice little outline. If we zoom in, you'll be able to see the track that it follows exactly as it goes through and cuts everything out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and generate a detailed preview and there you have it. You can see all of the cut marks. So when it's done, it's gonna go cut the material. We can check and see if we screwed anything up. Looks like everything goes right to the edge. So when we home it on the material, it should be just about perfect. Now, the only thing that could have made that easier is if there was an actual app to create the snowflake. And the funny thing is, if you wanted to, you could program your own app and use it because they have an entire library of apps for creating things like fidget spinners. Now, I created a ton of fidget spinners. If you guys want to see that video, geez, I think it has almost a million views. I'll have that link down in the video description. Now, for that, I used my smaller machine. I mean, we didn't need to create like a 29 inch by 29 inch fidget spinner. Or do we? Oh, we do. All right, that video might be coming down the road. Okay, now the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna name my project because in Easel you can save all your projects and access them and from any web browser on any device when you log in. And I'm sure at some point my wife's gonna want me to cut another one of these out because that's what wives do. Isn't that right, Rob? They do. They do. We'll call this Xander's School Project. Jerry's gonna get some for this. There we go. I like it. Hey, didn't he have glasses on before? Okay, so this is the point where we turn it over to Rob because now he has to fasten down this material. Otherwise, while it's cutting, it's just gonna do this. And then you get nothing that looks like a snowflake. At That's all. True. All right, Rob, show us how it's done. I actually love the way that they fasten stuff on here. It's just these little wooden dowels. You can even 3D print or cut your own little dowels on this machine if you break the ones that come with it. Which I've done, actually. Oh, so. you actually did make your own. So that's yeah. like what, MDF? Yeah. Cool. And uh, so I can't get this one in uh, far enough, so I'm going to have to... Uh... <laughs> what'd, you, what'd you say, Rob? You can't get that one in far <laughs> can't, enough? Can't get it in far enough, Jer. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should use that little uh, 3D printer that I gave you to 3D print the, the little caps that go on there so you can finger screw them. All right, moving on over to the other side. Torque her down. Now, we just want to make sure we get it as square as possible because we are cutting right to the perimeter of the material. All right, so we got it down in three places, and that's all we need because it's it's really on there. Hey, Rob, why can't, why can't I find your machine? Because I didn't turn it on. Oh, all right. Here, let's flip it on. We got to turn on the janky power box. All right, so you got to power it on and apparently plug in the USB cable too. Yeah, you actually have to. Yeah. Hey, that, that's that's bull crap, Inventables. Where's the Wi-Fi version of this? Yeah, it helps it communicate much better when you've got to plug <laughs> it. It in. helps when the ones and zeros can physically get to it. Hey, look, it turned <gasps> green. It found it. <laughs> Okay. All right, so right now we're just gonna do a test just to home the machine and make sure it's moving where it needs to be. Just moving it to the edge of the material. Just using the arrow keys too. Okay, coming down. Right there is where it's gonna start. And basically when it's doing the cut, it's gonna use that to measure all of the distance out from it as it's cutting the material. So it should stay within the boundaries. Plus, hey Rob, no pressure, but we only got one shot at this because my wife only bought one piece of poster board. Excellent. Okay, so we got the bit touching down to the material, so now it's fully calibrated and ready to carve. Although you also have to select the bit that you're using because that can affect the width of the material and the cut speed. So do you remember which bit you got on here? 1 16th up cut. Okay. Ooh, raise ooh, the bit. gonna raise that bit. All right, raise her up. Alright, then goes on, go! All right, we had to stop it a little short because it was on the final pass and it was starting to cut into stuff just because the material's got so much flexibility to it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just clean it up with an X-Acto knife. One giant snowflake, just like you. Ta-da! Ta-da! So it went through that side mostly and that, so, so somehow the surface of this is not completely flat. Now due to the surface of the X-Carve looking like it's a little bit uneven, we're having to do the final cut right now manually. Normally you just let the bit go into the wasteboard but we don't want to do that on a cut this big because just he doesn't want a giant snowflake on his wasteboard. Come on, I mean, he is a snowflake, but uh, who wants it? 
Job opening. Hey Rob, your knob's on the floor. Oh yeah, this is the exciting part of the video. Every every X card should come with an X-Acto knife. I don't just come over to use Rob's machine. I come over to use Rob. You're doing a good job, but honestly, I'm gonna need to see your visa before I leave, sir. You dirt your nerves. It's coming together, or should I say say coming apart? Actually, oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Now another feature of the X-Carve is that you can use these little tabs to hold the things in place as it's cutting. So you gotta cut those away. So go ahead and cut that away with an exacto. And there we go. All right, punch her out. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Ta-da! Look at me. I'm a pretty, pretty snowflake. Oh, I think Xander's gonna absolutely love this. So guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Rob, thank you for letting me use your garage and your X-Carve. We had one slight little problem with the X-Carve. I think the waste board is getting a little bit warped on it. Uh, probably have to replace that. So we did have to go do a little X-Acto knife to cut it out, but I think it turned out amazing. And I think both Ms. Barnacles and Xander are gonna be satisfied. If you guys have any questions about this video, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments section or come over and tweet me on Twitter. I am at Barnacles. And also go check out the other fidget spinner video where we use the small version of the X-Carve, which is actually called a Carvey that's self-contained to make fidget spinners. So depending on what your project requirements are, whether you have a big garage like this or you live in an apartment and you have to use your mom's kitchen table, Inventables pretty much has something that's gonna carve something like this out. So, hey, it's pretty cool. All right, well, I'm gonna head home because it's getting late and I'm kind of hungry, and I'm getting sick of looking at Rob. I mean, he is sexy to a certain extent. Ladies. I mean, he is Canadian, but you know, you can only take so much of him. All right, take it easy, guys. Until next time. I'm a pretty, pretty snowflake. Pretty, pretty snowflake. You're pretty, all right. I'm, I'm pretty, real pretty. Also, guys, I got my new t-shirts finally ready and on sale. Go to shop.barnard.com. This is the new Windows 2.0 shirt. So you send all my private data to Microsoft on. I'd say that's actually pretty accurate. But if you guys would like to check out this and many more of my silly shirts, head on over to shop.barnard.com and buy them. And we will ship them to you. I think that's how it works. Hey, and before you guys give me crap down in the comments about my porn star stash here, I do this every year for Movember. It's basically an organization that does research for men's health, testicular cancer, prostate cancer, even mental health. This is my seventh year growing a stash. I only do it in Movember and I raise money. Please consider joining my team. I have a link right down below. Come join me. Let's save some testicles. And don't worry, I'm shaving this off the 1st of December.